Okay, we're going to get away from two-dimensional areas with this one and move into three-dimensional volumes. Uh, but before we get into the 3D stuff, let's recap areas real quick. Um, here is uh, a typical area problem, the area between two curves, where you would establish a top and a bottom. Uh, I want to show you a graphic that may help you see how the area is actually computed and uh, accumulated is, is actually what we would call it. But this is a little program uh, that shows the area. Where these are two curves. We have the parabola and we have the line y equals x to the fourth. And the way we actually accumulate the area is we identify the left and the right boundaries of the whole region, which in this case is negative 2 and 2. And we start, let me move my x over, we start with an x coordinate at negative 2 and then we slowly move it to the right. And as I move it to the right, we slowly fill in that whole region. As my x goes from negative 2 over to positive 2, as it moves from negative 2 to positive 2, the distance between these two graphs, which is going to be the top minus the bottom, that distance slowly fills up the whole area. So to find this area, we set it up as the top minus the bottom the top minus the bottom, and then we allow the x to sweep from negative 2 all the way to positive 2. And you can see as my x goes from negative 2 to 2, uh, the distance from top to bottom fills up that whole region and allows us to find the area between the two curves. So let's set that up. Um, in this case, it would be, we're only going to set this one up. We're not going to finish solving it. But it would be the area, the antiderivative, from negative 2 to 2 of my top curve, which is y equals 4, minus my bottom curve, which is y equals x squared. And we would work that integral out to find the area. Uh, now, this one actually ends up being kind of neat because the areas on left and right sides of the y-axis are even. This is an even function, so that is a symmetric area. You could find the area from 0 to 2 of 4 minus x squared, which only gets the area on the right side of the y-axis, um, but you would have to double that area, so 2 times the area from zero to two and that's beneficial because then you get the luxury of plugging in a zero when it comes time to evaluate the integral so that is uh, area between two curves and i just wanted to show you that the area is accumulated by sweeping that x from left to right um, and and you find the area that way so let's move that back out of the way and let's look at a volume problem uh oh i just undid something there we go all right let's look at a volume problem uh, the way we're going to find volume is I'll start with the region just like area, and this region is square root of x, the x-axis, y equals 0, and x equals 9. And we're going to take this region, and we're actually going to rotate that region around the y-axis, or the x-axis. So I'm going to take, it's almost like I'm taking the x-axis and I'm spinning it like a top. And when I spin it, this is going to create a three-dimensional solid. Now this is very hard to visualize, and it's hard to draw a 3D shape on paper. Um, but I can maybe illustrate it with this. Uh, we have the graph of y equals the square root of x. Um, I have this point at x equals 9 and this one at x equals 0. And what we'll do is we're revolving that region, that blue region, around the x-axis. So let's revolve it so we can look at the shape and see what it looks like. And there it comes. There you can see the revolved region. It looks kind of like a bullet, um, if it's okay for me to be violent. Uh, so there is our region, and our challenge is to find the volume of that region. Um, we're going to do it very, very similar to the way we found the area. Hey, oh man, where'd it go? Okay, come back. We're going to do it very similar to the way we found the area between two curves. So I have that volume. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cross section. It's, it's the equivalent of the distance from top to bottom on the area curve. I'm going to take this cross section, and you get the cross section almost like pretend, uh, pretend you have a knife, and I were to just cut straight through this region. I would have a circular cross section. And I'm going to start this cross section way over here at the beginning of my region, x equals 0. My cross section is a circle. As I sweep that cross section, as I sweep it across my region, that circle fills up the whole volume. And so what we're going to do to find the whole volume is we're going to actually start with the area of a circle. And I'm going to think of it almost like I'm stacking plates. So I'm going to stack a plate right here, 
and I'm going to find the area of that plate. And then I'll move and get the next plate, and I'll stack it on top of it. I'll find the area of that plate. And then we're going to stack plates, stack plates, and we're going to find the area of each of these circles as we stack the plates. And those areas combined, when I add up all of those areas, it will eventually accumulate and fill up the whole volume. So let me copy this in, and I'll stop right there. All right, so here we are. So the way we're going to get the volume of this is we identify the cross-section. In this case, it's a circle, and that's where the disk came from. I told you it was volume by disk. This is a disk, and the, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area of the disk. Well, it's simply a circle, so the area is pi r squared. And what we're going to do is we're going to add up all of those areas from my beginning point to the ending point. Well, in calculus, when you add up a whole bunch of stuff, that's the integral. We add, and uh, if you remember way back in the day, I showed you that the elongated S is actually an S representing the sum. We're going to find the sum of all of those areas of the circle from my beginning point, which was x equals 0, all the way to my ending point, which is x equals 9. Um, now, I am moving from left to right. That's moving across the x-axis, which makes this a dx problem. The challenge I have now is I have to get my radius in terms of x because this is a dx problem. Uh, while I'm looking at my graph, this is my radius right here. Right there is my radius. That was stupid. I shouldn't have done that in red. I'll do it in, I mean, shouldn't have done that in white. I'll do it in red. There is my radius. My radius goes up to my equation, which is the square root of x. So my radius is determined by the equation square root of x, and then I can actually plug the square root of x in for the radius right here, and that gives me my volume formula. So now I'll be able to do the volume by accumulating the integral from 0 to 9 of pi times the square root of x all squared dx. What I will do to make this problem a little bit easier, uh, I usually pull out my constants. This is the same thing as pi times area from 0 to 9, and the square root of x squared is simply x dx, and that is an insanely easy antiderivative if you can get to this point. Um, so what we'll do is we'll find the volume by accumulating the area of the cross-section, and in this case all of our cross-sections are going to be circles. Uh, then we'll finish working this out. That'd be pi antiderivative of x is x squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to 9. So that'll be pi times, plug in 9, 9 squared, over 2 minus 0 squared over 2, and that is the volume of your region. Yeah, yeah. kind of tough on the first one. So eight minutes in, we've done one problem. Yoo -hoo! All right, uh, let's try a different one. The volume of the solid generated when this region right here, this time we're rotating around the y-axis. So if I were to rotate this around the y-axis, so now I'm taking this y-axis, I'm spinning this way, what's going to happen is we'll end up with a volume or a region that looks like this. Let's see, let's flip this, flip. It's going to revolve around that way, and I'll have a three-dimensional shape that looks like this, and this is going to look kind of like a tornado, like a little funnel. So let me draw in a cross-section. This time I would cut it left and right. If we spin around the y-axis, I'm going to cut my cross-section left and right, and this is what my cross-section looks like. I'll make this back dotted, just so we can kind of see that that's in the background. I don't know if that did any good or not. Um, so I draw my region. <clears throat> I find the shape of my cross-section. This is another disk. Only this time we're spinning around the y-axis. Whenever you spin around the y-axis, that means this is going to be a dy problem. Uh, you could also think of it as being dy because as you stack the plates, we're going to start our first plate down here, and then we will slowly stack them up. And we'll find the area of each one of these circles as we move up. And if you're moving up, your y's are changing. So I'm going up. That is a change in y, which is why this is a dy problem. Um, well, the area of a disk is pi r squared. This is a circle. I simply need to find the radius. And you always draw your radius back to your original function over here. And this function is y equals the square root of x. Uh, so it's going to be, let's see, this is pi times 
it'll be the antiderivative of my r squared. This is a dy problem. So pi r squared. The problem with this being a dy is that my equation is in terms of x. So I actually am going to have to solve this equation dy problem, I've got to get everything in terms of y. So I'm going to square both sides, and I know that y is equal, or y squared is equal to x, and that's actually what my radius is. The radius is determined by this equation right here, and that is the equation x equals the square root of y. So my radius is the square root of y, and then I can plug that in to the antiderivative. So pi antiderivative of y squared, that's my radius, all squared, dy. And then for my limits of integration, if we're moving up, I'm starting at a y coordinate of 0, and then I'm going to stack these plates all the way up until I get to a y coordinate of 2. And there is the antiderivative. Um, our radius was y squared, then we have to square the radius, and we'll work this one out. So pi, antiderivative 0 to 2, y squared squared is y to the 4th. And again, you have a very easy antiderivative. Usually these integrals are easy. It's the setting up that's difficult. So we'll do the power rule, y to the fifth over 5, evaluated from 0 to 2. So that'll be pi times uh, 2 to the fifth is 32, minus 0 to the fifth, and there's our answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, our general strategy when we're doing these volume problems our general strategy um, is first to sketch the region. You want to determine whether it's a dx or a dy problem, and that depends on how you're stacking your plates. If you're stacking them from left to right, then it's a dx. If you're stacking them up, then it's a dy. Uh, identify the shape of the cross-section. Uh, for now, we're only going to do disks. We will change that in the future. But for now, we just have disks. Uh, find the formula for the area of that cross-section, which if it's a disk or a circle, that's pi r squared. And you have to make sure you get the equation in terms of the appropriate variable. Uh, if it's a dy, you've got to get your radius in terms of y. That's what I had to do on this problem. If it's dx, like the first one, your radius has to be in terms of x. And then uh, once you do that, you integrate the formula that you get for the cross-section across whatever the interval is that we're going to use. All right, so there were two more problems I wanted to try. Um, this one, the volume of the solid generates generate generated when the region in the first quadrant. So we're only looking in the first quadrant. That's kind of important. Um, we have the graph x plus 2, x equals 1. Oh, I left off x equals 1. I need to draw that one in. x equals 1 would be about right here. There we go. And we're rotating that region. Um, around the x-axis. Well, if we're spinning around the x-axis, um, then let me rotate that and give us our region. All right, so there is our region. So we rotated everything around the x-axis. And when I rotated that, <clears throat> um, I can see that my cross-section is a circle or a disk. And the area of a disk is pi r squared. Okay. My disks are going to stack across from left to right. I'm going to have my very first cross-section right here at the beginning, and then I'm going to move ever so slowly to the right. So if I'm moving from left to right, and I'm adding up all of these areas, going from left to right, that's a change in x. So this is a dx problem. And if I'm going from left to right, everything needs to be in terms of x. So I've got to find out what the radius is in terms of x, which is going to be kind of nice because my equation is already in terms of x. My radius of this circle, the radius does go up to the function, and my function is x plus 2. So my radius is going to be x plus 2. Uh, so when I plug all of this into my integral, I'm going to do the antiderivative. I like to go ahead and pull the pi out of r, which is x plus 2, all squared. And I'm going to start stacking my very first plate at this boundary, which was x equals 1. And I'm going to finish stacking when I get to x equals 3. And now we will evaluate this antiderivative. We will first have to square it out. This one's a little bit tougher than the rest because you have to actually expand something. So that would be x squared plus 4x plus 4. But once you get to this point, it is simply the power rule. 
and I decided to go ahead and just pause it and work it out. You should be able to do these antiderivatives at this point. Um, it's the setting up that's going to be different. So uh, there's number three, and the very last one I wanted to look at. Um, we have a uh, the cubed root or y equals x cubed, y equals 8, and we're going to rotate this thing around the y-axis. So to get that region, if I rotate, rotate this around the y-axis, it would look like this. So it would flip left and right, and we'd have a, a shape that looks like this, and your cross-sections. Uh, this time I'm going to cut my cross-sections left and right through whatever the axis of rotation is, and my cross-sections are going to look like this. I'm going to have a cross-section like that. It's a circle again. I could cut another cross-section way up here, and my cross-sections look about like that. Let's see, I kind of like to make the back of it dotted so it looks more like that's in the background. I don't know. Am I just being silly? Am I wasting my time? I'm not wasting my time. I'm wasting your time. Take that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we have uh, the cross sections. My cross sections, again, are disks. I know that's very redundant at this point because that's all you know. Uh, since I am spinning around the y-axis, my plates, I'm going to stack these cross sections up from the bottom up to the top. That's a change in y. So this is a dy problem. I know the area of a disk is pi r squared. And I need my radius in terms of y. Now my radius does go from the center out to this function. But the problem is my function right now is in terms of x. I need to solve this to get it in terms of y. So if y equals x cubed, that means x equals the cubed root of y or y to the one-third. So there's my radius. And I'll plug all of that into an antiderivative. i times antiderivative of r squared, so y to the one-third, all squared. This is a dy. And if it's dy, my limits of integration need to be values of y also. We start at a y-coordinate of 0. And we're going to stack plates until I get all the way up to my top border, which is y equals 8. And then before I'm ready to integrate, we'll go square this. So y to the 1 3rd squared is y to the 2 thirds. Still a power rule. Has a fraction, but it is still a power rule. And here's your answer. There you go. Um, so you're doing the same thing every time. Find the cross section, find the area. Uh, determine if it's dx, dy, and we're going to stack those cross sections. Are we going to? Did I just say that? We are going to stack those cross sections up, uh, and we'll figure out more of this in class at some point in your life before you graduate. Yeah. <laughs>